What's going on, guys? This is Shane Baker. How are you guys doing? We're going to get started here in just a few moments. Okay, we're going to get started here in about two minutes, guys. Great. Welcome. Glad to have you guys here. i got a few more people jumping on right now. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of in-depth material today. Uh, we're not gonna hold anything back. So um, we've got just a few more viewers that are gonna be jumping online and then we're gonna get started. If you guys wanna take some notes, highly recommend it. I will be recording this and, uh, and we'll be sending it out to those that are watching this uh, webinar as well. And it's only gonna be up for a little while and then we're just gonna have basic highlights in. So if you wanna capture all the details that we're going to go over today, make sure that you watch the replay that I send out to everybody. And if you guys are logged in through Google Hangouts, there is a group chat available. And if you guys are logged in on the website, there is a chat tango down below where you guys can type in some questions as well. All right, great. So guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to go ahead and present. We're going to go through this. And like I said, this is fashion photography, business and marketing tips. This is not just for photographers though. So I want to make that really, really clear to you guys. So I'm super excited to have everybody here. Now, who's this webinar for? Uh, it is for photographers, models, makeup artists, stylists, and designers who want to grow their businesses. And you know, a lot of artists are, are amateurs, they're hobbyists, they're looking to just kind of do this on the side, part-time, maybe not even for income, just to get the experience of creating some incredible art. That is awesome. Uh, we're not really going to talk about anything beneficial for those individuals today. <laughs> really what we're going to go over is some of the business tools and practices specific to these artists that can help you grow your business. So just a quick about me. Uh, I picked up my camera in 2012 and I traded it for an iPad on Craigslist. Um, and I had no intention of keeping the camera. What I did, took a few photos, kind of fell in love with it. And a year and a half later, I won the Phoenix Raw Photographer of the Year Award. Uh, such kind of a huge moment for me. And that was kind of a turning point. And at the same time in 2012, um, I got started in real estate with Keller Williams. And about the time, just after winning Raw Photographer of the Year, um, I became the CEO of a Keller Williams office in Chandler. And we did about $260 million in business in 2015. Uh, and during that time, the reason I'm telling you this, during that time is we they invested thousands of dollars in my coaching and my trading. Uh, my business coaches, um, it was thousand do thousands of dollars a month just to have a business coach that I was um, – you know, responsible to every single week and having that person that I could reach out to if I got stuck with anything. Um, conferences in other states that I was flying out to and constantly meeting with, with high level minded individuals who really were just killing it at the business game. And when I first started with them, 
I was really good at marketing, but I wouldn't say that I was really strong in the business side of things. And Keller Williams really gave me the opportunity to learn that at a super high level and essentially got to hang out with self-made multimillionaires all day long, every single day, and get to ask them the really tough questions um, about what was working and more importantly, what wasn't working. Because I think there was a lot more value in understanding what wasn't working for them. Because if I was doing the thing that wasn't working and I could see that it didn't work for every single person that I looked up to, chances are it probably was something that I should not be doing either. So it, it was a great training um, and kind of a crucible for me. And we uh, fast forward recently last year in May, or excuse me, March, founded the Arizona Creative Professionals. And the goal was to kind of help share some of that training and um, the business knowledge that I got from KW and give it to the artist that I was just so passionate about being involved with uh, through photography. So that's just a quick about me on there. So in this brief introduction, we're gonna be covering some of my favorite methods to help you guys manage your clients, get more business and improve your marketing. So I'm sure that that's something that everybody that's listening to this is interested in doing or else you wouldn't be here, right? So I'm not gonna pull any punches. Like I said, I'm gonna give you guys pretty much the exact same methods that I use. It doesn't mean that they're the best, maybe not even the best for you. You might have some uh, other ideas that you come across that are even better. But what I know is that these methods work. And what I've learned is that business, no matter what industry you're in, it, business is business. The same principle, A plus B equals C over here applies in this industry. Uh, there's really no difference. All you're going to do is just the details are kind of what changes, but the big picture doesn't really change that much. And that's what we're going to be covering here today as we go through this. So first question, what is the most important thing that you should be doing to grow your business? Now, I want you guys to think about that for a minute. And, um, if you're in the chat, go ahead and put down maybe two or three things that you think are the most important thing to grow your business. Okay. Well, here's where a lot of artists miss the boat. And what they don't understand is, yes, you're a photographer, yes, you're a model, yes, you're a makeup artist, yes, you're a stylist, designer. I mean, that's, that's your product, that's your service that you're selling, right? But ultimately, at the end of the day, you're in the lead generation business. So what do I mean by that? By lead generation, every business, no matter who you are, is in the lead generation business. So for example, try being a photographer earning money if you don't have any clients to take a photo of. Try being a stylist, trying to make money in this business without anybody to go and style their hair. Try being a makeup artist that has nobody to do makeup for. It just doesn't work. So yeah, you might be the best at what you do, but unless you have clients, there's just no way to build a viable business uh, as an artist doing this. So lead generation is extremely valuable. In fact, it's the most important thing that you guys should be looking at every single day. So for me personally, I spend a minimum of two to three hours a day doing lead generation. And there are a lot of ways to do lead generation. You can, in some industries, it might be picking up the phone and making a phone call to a potential client, right? It could be Facebook ads. It could be writing a blog. It could be reaching out to people that you've worked with in the past and asking them for referrals. There's just so many things that lead generation can encompass. It could be putting together an event and inviting uh, others to come. That could be your form of lead generation. The fact is you have to be consistent with it and it has to happen every single day without fail. And so like I said, I, do, I dedicate between two to three hours a day in lead generation. So, so what does my lead generation look like? So for example, what I do is every single morning, first thing I do when I wake up is I kind of envision what my day is gonna look like. I kind of envision what I want to accomplish that day. And the next thing I do is I pick up a book and I try to read for about 30 minutes at least. 
And so right now I'm reading a book called The Big Small. And reading books is so important. And I can't stress this because essentially what you're doing is for a few dollars, you're buying years, sometimes decades of knowledge and wisdom from somebody for just a few dollars. And you're getting it in bite-sized chunks. It's awesome. So read a book every morning, go for a walk. And I usually listen to a business podcast. Uh, my favorite right now is Entrepreneur on Fire, John Lee Dumas. It's awesome. If you haven't checked it out, he interviews a new entrepreneur every single day, 365 days a year, and he shares their stories. And it's about 25 minutes long for each one. So it's completely doable. You can listen to it on your way to work, wherever you need to go, uh, but it's awesome. So after I've done that, the next thing I do is I take a look at my, um, my day any events that I got coming up, any photo shoots I got coming up, make sure I'm prepared for those. And then I step right into lead generation. And there's a lot of ways that lead generation takes, takes place. But one thing that's really important, before you do lead generation, you need to know how to manage your clients with a CRM. Because if you're generating all these leads and you're pulling all this information together and you don't have um, a place to put those people, if you don't have... Um, a way to keep track of who you talk to and where they're at in the process, you're just making more busy work for you that you're never going to go back and finish. So managing your clients with a CRM is extremely important. So what do I mean by a CRM? It's your database, right? And many people, it might be your, your phone contacts or your Google Drive, you know what I mean? Something like that. So for me, I use Insightly. So I'm going to step out of this real quick. And we're going to go ahead and go to my Insightly. It's absolutely free. And that's why I love it. One of the reasons, but it's really super simple and easy to use as well. So in Insightly, I can click here on the tasks and I can see everything that I've got to do for today. I've So tomorrow I've got a family photo shoot. I spelled family wrong, evidently. And some of the upcoming tasks that I've got here, but here's where it gets really valuable anybody that's a potential lead. And by a lead, I mean somebody that has talked to me about doing business with me, but I haven't actually converted them and no money's passed hands to me. Um, that is a lead, right? So here's where I keep my leads. And once I get a lead and they say, yes, let's go ahead and do this. There's a budget set. They're ready to rock and roll. Then it transforms itself into an opportunity. Now, you can set this up any way you want to, but it's completely free, but it allows me to keep track of everybody that I need to be consistently following up with. So every single day, part of my lead generation is to go in here, see when I talk to this person last, and see what the next step is for me to move them to the process of actually turning them into a, a client, right? So then I've got all my contacts. Now, my contacts for me um, include videographers, models, makeup artists, stylist, um, concepts. I want to shoot like a milk dress concept, um, you know, corporate clients, things like that. So here's where I keep my actual clients and a lead never becomes a contact until they actually become, for example, a client or I've worked with them. So it's a really simple way for me to separate people of high value from those who I'm just a potentially working with. And that is so important to keep in mind in your database. You want to make sure that you don't mix up the high value people in your database with those that are just kind of kicking the tires, so to speak. And here's the reason why. Because in the future, should I ever decide to put together um, a promotion or, or let's say a giveaway or some kind of special event, who do I want to invite? Do I want to invite a tire kicker that I've never done any business with? Or do you think I should invite people that I've actually worked and shot with? I think I should go with those because they're going to be the most likely to actually give me a referral because they know they love my product, my service. They had a great experience with it and they're continuing to engage with me. Those are the people that are going to be more, most likely to refer me to somebody else. So that is huge, huge, huge. So definitely find a database where you can keep track of your people that you're talking to every single day. And this Insightly is just awesome because it does reports that you can pull here. So you can do like how many 
for example, do you know why you lost a potential bid? So if you're sending bids out to people and you're losing them, you can keep track of it here. For me, uh, in the beginning, I lost a lot of bids probably because I just wasn't that good, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I just didn't have the skill set that they were looking for. Now, my biggest reason for losing bids is budget. The people that um, say no to me, it's just they I'm not I'm out of their price range, which is completely fine with me. That's exactly where I want to be with my business. I would rather have people tell me no because um, I'm too I'm out of their price range um, than because of the quality of my work. But here's the cool thing about it. That allows me, most of those people that I've lost because of price, what I do with those is I give those to others as a referral. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But uh, you can also send emails here through Insightly. And one of the things that you can do is set up some templates here. So here's a template that I use for my reviews. And I, I write this one time. I never have to write it again. And every time I do a, a client shoot, this email goes out to those clients. And it simply says, I always ask, or excuse me, I also ask my clients if they would take three minutes to share their experience online by selecting one of the following links and leaving a review. And then I leave a detailed list of exactly where they can leave me a review with a link to it. So when they click on it, it opens up exactly to the portion where they got to leave me a review. And it's super, super easy for them. Boom. Right? You want to make things extremely easy for your clients. And one of the ways that this helps me is by sending this out right after a shoot, the client has, um, you know, they're feeling good, they're feeling great, they had a great experience, and that's the time that they're most likely to leave me a really positive review. And because I gave them three options, they also get the chance to pick the one that they're most likely to engage, uh, engage with and be on. So using Insightly, it's been huge for me. And if any of you guys are looking at something like this, um, I have a guy who can completely set your Insightly up for you to manage your business from start to finish. He'll do all the work for you and it's like a hundred bucks. The guy is awesome at it. And uh, he used to work for Google and this integrates extremely well with Google. All the Google products work really well with it. So highly, highly recommend that. But the most important thing to get out of this is that I have a system for tracking the people that I'm doing lead generation with every single day. So at any point in time, I know where a potential client is in my sales line process. And after I do a photo shoot with a potential with a client, I've got a system that I'm taking them through to continue to deliver value to them. And that's so important because how many times have we done photo shoots with people and just never followed up with them afterwards to either ask them what they thought, to send us a review, to give us a referral, or to even just follow up and see if they need some additional service three to six months later, or maybe even ask them who they know that uh, would be looking for some additional service at that time. I mean, just so many people don't do that simple thing. And to be honest with so many people, and I imagine you guys have a lot of clients, a lot of people that are talking to you about your, um, your services, it's so important to manage it. And using Insightly definitely helps me to do that. So great, coming through here. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is how to create incredible marketing pieces for absolutely free, no cost, right? And I use a program, it's called canva.com, absolutely love it. So I wanna introduce you guys to it. So here is Canva. Like I said, it's free. It's like Canvas without the S at the end. You wanna sign up for it. And what it'll do when you when you first log in, it's got this um, create a design section. And if you click on the more button, no matter what you're creating an advertisement for, you'll find it here. So here's your social media post. And it's got the Twitter post, Pinterest graphics, all this stuff is already sized perfect for you. Documents, blogging and eBooks, marketing materials. So if you're putting together a flyer, it's got mar it's got flyers, five inch by seven inch flyers ready to go, gift certificates, social headers, right? How many times have you went to make a Facebook event cover or YouTube thumbnail or something like that and you were like, man, you know, I just don't know what the size is and I keep getting it wrong. This is where you find that. So let's click on Facebook cover for example. Pop open this 
And you'll notice right here, it's already got this spot for your profile picture so that you know when you create your item or your advertisement here, you know how it's gonna look already on your Facebook page, which is absolutely awesome, I love it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take a look at your background. So if you click on the background section, it's got a few different options here. They're very basic. Most of these are free. As you scroll down, you'll see some paid ones. Uh, you can also search by color or do colors here. But here's where it's really cool. If you go here to the upload section, you can upload your own image by clicking here and, um, and just taking a photo and upload. So let's say this one here with Brenna that I took, took this photo in the studio. So boom. I could drag and drop Brenna right in here and boom, that looks fantastic. Oh, that looks amazing. I should actually use this. Drop this down a little bit. Cool. So there it is. So now I got Brenna on there. Now what if I wanna add some text to this? Boom, right here, click on text. It's got all these really great templates already ready to go. So let's say that uh, I really like this one. Boom, drag and drop. I click inside of it. I could edit it, put anything else I want. So we'll just say, oh, we gotta capitalize this. Baker Studios, I'm not in Manhattan. We are in Phoenix, Boom. right? You could drag and drop this around and you can add additional elements to it. You could put like the date of an event that you have coming up. So if you didn't notice, we'll go back here. Fashion photography, business and marketing tips. I created this in Canva. So if we come back up here, close this out, it keeps a record of all your designs. So if you wanna come back here and use one, you can. So let's say this is the one that I created for this webinar. Here it is. So let's say that I wanted to repurpose this and do a change and I wanted to uh, call it something else instead of fashion photography, say um, wedding photography. We'll come in here, change out wedding photography. And then I click on download, it gives me four different options, web, JPEG, high quality PNG, PDF standard, and PDF for print. So if you wanna print this out, definitely use that one. And boom, just like that, I've got uh, a marketing piece that looks exactly like the other one I created, but it was super easy to change. I didn't have to use Photoshop. I didn't have to make it difficult. In fact, I can even have other people do this for me without me having to worry about it because it's super easy to use and I don't have to worry about them having Photoshop or any other program to edit and make changes with. So using canva.com is extremely valuable. It, it can help you just take your advertising and your marketing pieces to the next level because everything looks so good, it's so clean, and it's absolutely free. I just don't see any other reason to, I mean, why you would not use it. It's the best thing on the market for creating easy to look, um, easy looking marketing pieces. So that is canva.com. So coming over here, Okay, so we're gonna talk about how to increase your Facebook likes organically. Uh, we're gonna use one simple strategy to go ahead and start that. So here is the strategy that we're gonna use. What is this popping up? Hold on. Hold on, sorry about that. Okay, so anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one simple strategy for Facebook. Uh, here it is. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down um, on, okay, let me back up. I searched for Shane Baker Studios, that is my page on Facebook. You're gonna find it, um, and then you wanna go to a section where you have a lot of likes on something. And this isn't a lot of likes, I've only got what, 15? Big deal, right? I'm on my regular profile, right here. I'm not actually on Shane Baker Studios, but I searched for it, right, and I pulled that page up. But because I own it, when I open this up, these are all the people that like this. And if you notice here, see this invite button? That means that these people do not yet like Shane Baker Studios on Facebook. But Facebook is giving me a way to invite them to like my page. So these are people who liked the post. They liked this post but they have not yet liked my page. So I click on those individuals and then I can come over here and, uh, and go through this. 
and invite those people. This is such a simple, easy way to organically grow your Facebook. I can't even recommend it enough. It's awesome. So as you're going through here, you want to look for all the posts that you have where you have individuals that have liked it and find out how many of these people you can actually invite to like your page. So for example, let's see here. Is there anybody here? All those people already like the page or they've been invited. How about this one here? So I try to keep up with this pretty often. Here we go. We can invite Greg Spear. So I keep up with it pretty often. So I usually don't have any that I miss, but you get the idea. So Robin Broom will invite them. So these are people that are already engaging with your content. They haven't liked your page. Those are the highest, they're, they're the most likely to actually reciprocate and like your page once you've asked them. Boom, look at that. Jacob Sullivan likes your page, Shane Baker, Baker Studios. Dude, I couldn't have planned that better. That was awesome. So <laughs> we invite them to, to like the page. Boom, got a result just like that. Super easy way for you guys to grow your page organically. So big fan of that. How to get more referrals. Here's my thing with referrals. They are such a huge piece of your business. And the number one way to do that is to make other artists your ally instead of looking at them as competition. And here's what I mean by that. Other photographers, I told you guys in the beginning, the main reason people say no to me now, if they, and here's what I mean. If they've already asked me what my price is and they want to shoot with me, that tells me that they already like my style. So they're not saying no to me because of my style because they're already asking me, you know, hey, could you shoot? Are you interested? Are you available this date? Okay, awesome. So when pricing happens, usually the only reason I get told no now is that I'm out of their budget, right? Which is completely fine to me. And I really don't make any allowances or changes to that. I don't make price cuts or things because first off, it isn't fair to me because of the time and the energy that I've taken to, to build my business to the point that I have. Uh, and number two, it's not fair to them because then it's gonna teach them that I can be bought at a lower price and they're never gonna wanna come back and get me at a regular price ever again. And it's not fair to other artists. Because the truth is there are plenty of artists that are less expensive than me that I can refer this out to. And why would I do that? Why would I give up making a quick $100 with somebody for some portraits um, instead of making $250 more normal rate um, by giving it to somebody else? Here's why. If by looking at another artist and, and building a relationship with them and saying, hey, look, when I get a referral that doesn't fit either the style that I want to shoot in or it doesn't fit the budget for the client, would you mind if I referred business to you? Well, they're gonna say yes, of course. But here's the key thing. After a period of time, you should expect to start getting some additional referrals back from that individual. Now, I'm not saying that you should always give to get, expect something in return. That's not the proper way to do business either. But if after six months or a year, that individual hasn't referred any business to you at all, my suggestion would be to find somebody else to refer to because the people that I refer business to always refer business back. And here's why. The, the lower end photographer is going to get a, a job and they're going to be over their head and they're going to need somebody to help them out. Who do you think they're going to think of? I want them to think of me. They may get a client who wants something that's out of their genre and they know it. And instead of just saying yes to it and hating the fact that they said yes to it or giving it to somebody else, they have me that they could say, hey, Shane, I've got this referral. I've got this client. This is what they're looking for. Are you interested? And it's at this price. And then I have the opportunity to say yes or no. So you start building this symbiotic relationship where you help each other grow one another's business. And here's the facts. There is enough business for everybody, period. There's absolutely enough business for everybody. I have... I cannot fathom the idea that anybody thinks that by me taking business from somebody, um, you, that doesn't really happen. I don't take business from anybody. I just create business for myself while they create, the, create it for themselves as well. There's more than enough to go around. Here's the other thing too. Look for creating referrals, not just with other artists that do what you do, but other artists in 
competing or not competing, but in, in industries that are very similar. So if you're a makeup artist, look to build referrals with photographers, stylists, designers, maybe even other bloggers. Look for those kind of referrals. And here's how I do it. I'll talk to somebody, for example, uh, and I'll say, hey, look, this is what I do. And I know that you do stuff that's a little bit different. Your genre is this and this and this, and I don't shoot those genres. I want you to tell me who your ideal client is. Great. What I want to do is next time I meet that ideal client, I want to know who to send them to. What's the best way for me to get them in contact with you? And it's that easy. Because here's the thing. when people and, and if you want referrals, you have to do the opposite. You have to be very specific with what it is that you're looking for. So I can't just go to somebody and say, hey, I'm looking for more photography clients. That's not going to work because the truth is I don't shoot all kinds of photography. I'm not going to shoot a baby, right? I'm not going to shoot. I'm not really big into, um, I don't do like a lot of sports photography. Like you're not going to invite me out to your, your kid's high school game and have me shoot a sports sporting event. You know, it's just not what I do. So that's too broad. It's too general. What I need to say is what I'm looking for are corporate individuals who are looking for a rock star portrait of themselves for their website. Who do you know that you can refer to me? That is a very specific person and demographic. And by being that specific, you automatically start thinking of people that fit that mold. But if I just say that I'm looking for photography, the truth is, you know what? I don't know. That's too broad. I, I'm not thinking of anybody in general, so I'm never going to refer anybody to you. But if you come to me and say, Shane, I'm a makeup artist and I'm looking for um, brides who are getting married at the end of the year in October and later on, who do you know? I can think of three people right now that are getting married in that time that I'm shooting as clients that I can refer to you. That is the way to ask for referrals uh, and to build that referral business. So, the other thing we want to talk about is how to grow your Instagram account quickly. This is one of my favorite tools, people. I absolutely love it and, and um, definitely recommend you guys go to the Play Store, the Apple Store, and download this app right now. It's called Crowdfire. Okay, let me show you how this works. Let's go to my Instagram account. This is for Shane Baker Studios. Boom, look at that. Okay, so it's not a huge amount but it's a lot more than I had in December. In December, about December 16th, I had around 560 followers on Instagram. This is massive growth that I've had on my Instagram account, right? And if you go down to the beginning of my Instagram, I used to struggle to get you know, a fair number of likes on anything. It was maybe 20, 30 likes. So if you look here, 144, 109, 76, I just posted this one, 121, 76, 85. So the, the conversion rate went up considerably. So these are people that are actually engaging with my Instagram account at a much higher level, which has been awesome. Now, people ask me all the time, well, Shane, does that translate into real dollars? Like, yes. So over $3,000 has come as a direct result this past year from Instagram only, traceable to it. So the simple answer is the time and energy to do it, is it worth the $3,000 I made? Absolutely. So if you haven't made at least that amount on Instagram, my suggestion is follow the steps that I'm gonna take you through, uh, duplicate them, copy them, and start building this for yourself. So I use a, an app called Crowdfire. And let's go ahead and pull it up, where's it at? I'm gonna have to do this, Crowdfire. There's a desktop version and there is a, a web app, or excuse me, an app for your phone. Here's how this works. You'll notice right here, it's got all my non followers. So these are people that I'm currently following that don't follow me back. These are fans. These are people that I'm not following that follow me back. Recent unfollowers, these are people that have unfollowed me. Marcy underscore you. Okay, boom, you're gone. I'm going to unfollow you too. So recent followers, these are people that have started following me. Here's where it gets really powerful though, right here, copy followers. What you do is you go into Instagram and you find people that have a really 
large following that are in your genre. So for example, Peter Hurley, he is a headshot photographer. He is the headshot photographer. It's like $1,200 just to step in front of his lens in New York. The guy is amazing. 28,000, over 28,000 followers. He's obviously somebody that um, you know is, is doing things at a really high level. Here's how this works. I'm gonna copy Peter Hurley's name drop it right into Crowdfire, hit enter. And what Crowdfire does is shows me everybody that is following Peter Hurley. Here's why that's valuable. If they like Peter Hurley, what do you think the chances are that they're gonna like Shane Baker Studios, another portrait photographer in Arizona? It's a pretty high likelihood. Now, if Peter Hurley was selling transmissions in Michigan, the odds that people would like Shane Baker Studios as a photographer in Arizona are pretty slim. So you have to pick companies that follow along really well. Um, if you're a makeup artist, search for top makeup artists or fo follow, search for top Instagram sites that highlight makeup. If you're a hairstylist, do the same thing. Um, and, and cross promote. If you're a makeup artist, look for other really great photographers because if people like their photography, chances are they're going to enjoy your makeup as well. If you're if you're at that level, if you're doing that kind of thing, um, look for avant garde, anything like that. You get the idea. So then I'm going to come here, and then it allows me to add up to 60 people an hour that follow Peter Hurley. So we're going to come in here. We're adding all these individuals. Boom, and then I hit my limit, okay? So where am I at again? Let's go to back to my Instagram. 6,195. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Look at that, boom, four followers in like a few seconds. And here's what's cool about it. These are people that actually engage with your content because they already like content similar to yours, right? It's absolutely awesome. Crowdfire is amazing. Now it is free. The free version will only let you do 60 people, um, 60 additions or subtractions because you can get rid of people. So for example, none followers, people that I'm following that I don't follow, I can get rid of them. But once you hit your 60 hour limit, you're done. Now, if you're using the free version, that's 60 people per day in a 24 hour period that you can do. I use the paid subscription. It's like 10 bucks a month. Allows me to manage two Instagram pages at once. And this, uh, this allows me to do 60 per hour. So it's worth the investment to go ahead and get in there. But here's the other thing with your Instagram that works really well. When people comment on your material, let's see if I've done a good job here. Okay, so whenever somebody comments on my Instagram, you'll see here, boom, I'm tagging them back and I'm commenting. I'm engaging with the people that are engaging with me on Instagram. That is so important. You can't just go on here and follow people and expect them to follow you back and stay engaged if you're not giving anything back to them. It just doesn't work that way. It's it's a social media platform. You have to be social on it. Does it take a lot of time? Yes, it does take some time. Is it worth it? Absolutely worth it. So, you know, within just a few months, added a few thousand dollars to my bottom line. Um, my goal and what I hear is that after 10,000 followers, it just kind of explodes on its own, which is what I'm really looking forward to getting to that point uh, and making that happen. Here's the other really cool thing about Instagram. It's the easiest way that I've found to get into direct content with high profile individuals. Here's what I mean. Uh, can I see my messages here? No, what is this? No, okay. So it's not gonna show me on the desktop version on the app, uh, on my phone, you can see it. So what I'll do is I'll go on here and let's say for example, we'll, we'll search Peter Hurley again. Okay, Peter Hurley. Instead of sending Peter Hurley an email, what I've gotten used to is sending Peter Hurley a direct message through Instagram. And here's why. At a very high level, most, most artists who have turned their business um, I will actually have turned their art into a business. Maybe they have assistants, they've got other people managing it for them, their, their inbox for their email goes to kind of a catch-all inbox, um, and they don't engage with it a lot just because there's so much of it. However, with Instagram, since it's, it's more of a personal thing and you have to do it from your phone, most individuals are actually um, 
looking at posting to their Instagram account by themselves. So when I send a direct message to Peter Hurley on Instagram, the likelihood that it's actually him that's going to read it and see it goes up, which also increases the likelihood that he's going to get back to me. So this is where I've been reaching out to people with massive followings um, who have contacted me to set up some additional shoots um, here. So I'll give you an example. Kalani um, Hilliker. She is. Look at this, 2.4 million followers. Now, her and her mom live in Scottsdale. Um, they're right up the street from us. And you can see here, email Matt at talentresources.com, whatever. If I email Matt, you know, I'm never going to hear back from him probably. So I sent a direct message through Instagram. Within a matter of days, Kalani's mom got back in touch with me. And she's like, yes, we're excited. Let's do it. Let's set up a shoot. So we're going to have Kalani into the studio. And uh, we're going to do just kind of a brief webinar talking about her. Here's why that's important. Not only was I able to get directly in touch with her uh, and kind of bypassing this whole little system here with Matt as the gatekeeper, I now get to plug in with her 2.4 million followers. Because the content we create, chances are, I'm hoping, and I, I expect her to share something of it, to post it online somehow, some way. So that gives me exposure to her network. And that's what I really what I'm looking for is to find people that are doing things at a bigger level, higher level than I am. And, and asking them, instead of asking them for, for something, I'm saying, hey, what can I do for you? So my approach to Kalani was, hey, saw your Instagram account. It's awesome. Um, I wanted to know if there's anything that I could possibly do to add value to you. If you'd ever like to kind of tell your story, I'd love to hear about it and share it with my network if you think that would be valuable to you and your brand. And I got a yes. And she's not the first one. So it's happened more than once. So that is a huge, huge resource and a way to use Instagram. So a few other quick ideas. Um, let's see here. Thumbtack is another really good idea. So if you haven't used Thumbtack or heard about it, you go on to th Thumbtack and you can search up ser what service do you need and what zip code. So let's go ahead and put in here um, photographer. I'm going to put this in because that's what I'm looking for. Um, wedding photographer, boudoir, headshot, acting. So let's say that I need a uh, portrait photography. And my zip code, 85225. Put this in here. Um, introduce me to some pros. We'll say professional headshot. I'll do continue. Um, where will they be taking? Photo studio is where I need it. I can hit continue. And I go through here. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole process because what will happen is it will send out to every photographer who's got a profile with Thumbtack this lead. And what'll happen is every photographer that gets that lead, the first five to respond, get the opportunity to pitch to me and tell me what their pricing is. I get to take a look at their portfolio, et cetera. After the first five have responded, it doesn't let anybody else respond. So if you're the number, if you're the sixth person to respond back, it says, nope, you can't do it. So you gotta be pretty quick on it. But here's the cool thing about it. Um, for about every dollar that I spend, I make another 10. So for every $100 I spend with Thumbtack, I get about $1,000. So here's the way that the cost, it works. You pay to send a quote. And it costs on average about $1.50 to $2 for me to send a quote, which means that somebody says, hey, I need a photographer. I think they're going to be a good fit for me. And I shoot over a quick quote and I say, hey, this is my pricing. This is my portfolio. If you like it and it looks good, send me back a message. We'll get in touch. Uh, we'll get some coffee together, right? So that's how I use Thumbtack. Some of the things that you got to watch out for. If they don't have a budget, because you could set a budget. You say, hey, yeah, I can spend this much money on this photography. Or I don't, I, you know what I mean? Or they can say, I don't have a budget. What I learned after over a year of doing this I never got a client who didn't have a budget. Then I realized if they don't know how much they can spend or even want to spend, and I'm on the higher end of the spectrum, why would I ever think that they'd be interested in that? I mean, it's just not going to happen. Usually the clients that know that, hey, I'm willing to spend five to $600 for a portrait, boom, awesome, perfect client for me because they know that they're going to pay um, some good money for some good quality images. That's who I want to be in front of, right? So always made sure... When you're using Thumbtack, my suggestion is pick people that actually have a budget that is set in stone 
that they have ready to go um, because then that's going to give you such a bigger uh, conversion rate because if they're not at your budget, let's say that they say, you know, I'm looking for somebody that can do headshots at $100. I'm not going to respond to that. It's a waste of my $2 because I know that I'm not going to shoot at it um, and I know that they're looking for a deal. You know, they're looking for something really inexpensive. It's just not my ideal client. So that's the way to use Thumbtack. Like I said, um, for about every $100 I spend in advertising with them, um, or sending quotes, I mean, I get about $1,000 in return. I know another makeup artist, her ratio has been about the same. And I've talked to a lot of people that kind of really struggle with Thumbtack. So a couple things, make sure your portfolio is on par. It's gotta be awesome. And I'll give you an example. I did a headshot for a guy through thumb that through thumbtack. <laughs> he came to me and I asked him, and well, this is another thing. Always ask your clients when they do choose you, you know, what was it about me that made you decide to go with me? And his words, he said, you know, I got five responses from all these people, and you know, most of them wrote this big long thing about, you know, how wonderful it would be to work with me. He said, at the end of the day, Shane, none of that mattered. I didn't even read that stuff. I went straight to the portfolios. And if the portfolio was strong and, and had what I wanted, that's who I chose and I chose you. Because that's the, that's the thing you guys have to remember. At the end of the day, it's not the things that you're telling to the client or talking at the client about. It's the work that you can show them, right? The, the value of, of your business really is in the, the skill level that you're at. And the lead generation helps you find those people that are interested in your skill level and in your price point. That's, the, that's what lead generation does for you. But at the end of the day, for this client, he said, you know, the words that they were saying didn't matter. I wanted photos. And I knew what kind of photos I wanted. And your portfolio had the kind of photos that I wanted. So keep that in mind as, as well when you're using Thumbtack and even your portfolio. What kind of photos do you have in your portfolio? If you were a potential client, would you hire yourself? And if the answer is no, then go back in there, redo some of the images, um, put up some better stuff on there if you haven't touched it in a while, or just get better. And the only way to get better is to by going out and shooting as often as you can, putting groups together, people that you can say, hey, look, I want to add this to my portfolio. Help me out. Help me make this happen. So um, I think that wraps it up. We're coming up. It's about 50 minutes into it. Thank you guys. I hope this was hugely valuable to you. Um, I'm taking a look here. I don't think that there is a way for me to see if anybody was commenting on some stuff. My thing here says reconnect on my phone. I was keeping track of the chat tango webinar. So I apologize for that. But anyways, I hope this was extremely valuable for you guys. Thank you all for joining me. And um, if there's anything else that I can do to help you guys out, please let me know. Take care.